Hello everyone, it is Mel and I'm coming at you guys today with a new video that is going to showcase the Bloomwood family, aka the brand new family that I have created for what is going to be my high school years Let's Play series. Um, I'm not sure at this stage how long this series is going to be, whether it's going to be like a limited or mini series or whether I'm just going to continue to play it until such a time the storyline kind of ends and they sort of graduate high school. I don't know, <laughs> but I guess we will sort of go through all of that and take all of that as it comes and sort of make decisions accordingly. But with that said, I did want to introduce you to at bare minimum, the main family or the main household that we are going to be playing this series with. And I thought it would only be fitting to start with the parents and then obviously show you the two teenagers that we'll be playing with and just give you a bit of an idea of who they are as Sims, um, their personalities, what they're into, where I sort of see them heading, that sort of thing. So first Sims first, here we have the lovely Cara Bloomwood. She is, of course, the matriarch of the Bloomwood family. She is the loving mother, the loving wife, and she is actually a stay-at-home mum and stay-at-home wife. So she very much prides herself on her home, uh, you know, making sure that her family is fed, well looked after, dressed well, that their home presents well. She's just very much a homebody and she really thrives and excels at being, you know, a great mum and a great wife. I definitely see her as the kind of Sim who spends her days, you know, doing those household chores, the laundry, cleaning up after everyone, pottering around in the garden and, you know, being that wife or that mum that, you know, when the family comes home from school and or work, she's got a hot meal on the table. She's asking everyone how their day was. She's just a really loving, really sort of strong, nurturing family woman. With Kara, I do definitely want to explore the wellness career. So I did actually give her the self-care specialist because basically what I see from her is during the let's play she is going to obviously want to explore a hobby or something to sort of do that is away from the house I mean she's probably going to get a little bit of tired of a little bit tired of cleaning up after everyone at some point and she's going to want to have something that is hers and I see her you know going through that sort of yoga phase meditation um, and then somehow somewhere some way exploring the self-care wellness side of things so that's why i gave her that aspiration as i did mention because she is that strong sort of family woman i did give her a bunch of traits that i thought would be fitting so she is family oriented she is a foodie and she is of course cheerful again she is that sim that the whole family rely on you know if they're having a bad day she is the one who makes them smile she would do absolutely anything for the people that she loves so that is sort of who who she is and how I see her. I did give her a couple of traits, not too many. Uh, color wise, I did give her like some favorites in terms of like the really bright colors. So the oranges, the reds, the yellows. She also likes white. I think I gave her her favorite music is like backyard music. So again, I feel like that comes from, you know, pottering around in the garden, having a stereo on or having some earbuds in something like that while she's doing her gardening. And then in terms of the other traits, uh, sorry, not the traits, the likes that I gave her, it was just the likes that I guess fit her husband. Um, yeah, I, I can't wait to kind of see her develop because like I said, her personality at the moment is essentially non-existent. Her personality or who she is is a person is defined by her family and the fact that you know her family have to be looked after, well-loved, that sort of thing. So they're her everything. She puts all of them before herself. And that's kind of who she is as a person. She doesn't really know herself outside of that. Um, and I see that she's probably going to go through a little bit of a, you know, identity crisis where she starts to sort of let her husband know that, you know, she's struggling a little bit. She doesn't know who she is, you know, ever since she graduated high school, they were young parents. So basically the two of them, their backstory, I see her as having been the cheer captain, the most popular girl in school. And he was the jock, you know, the quarterback of the football team. Um, they are high school sweethearts, they fell in love, and pretty much when they left school, they started their family quite young, um, so they are young parents, and because of that, she never really went to university, she never really kind of explored whether she wanted to study or what she wanted her career to be, um, and I guess throughout this Let's Play, she's sort of going to stumble through that and realise that she doesn't really know who she is other than a mother and a wife. Um, and of course, her incredibly supporting husband will be by her side at while she sort of goes through that. But other than that, 
I don't want to sort of go into too much detail because that will obviously start to play out through the Let's Play itself. But that's kind of a bit of a background on Kara Bloomwood. Um, I'll give you a quick display of her outfit. So this is her everyday wear and she does have a second option for her everyday wear. And again with this one and with her like first outfit, I just wanted to her to have something that was very kind of mum, very sort of pretty well groomed and then this one is more of a vibrant you know she's a very happy outgoing loving caring person and I just thought that the brightness and the florals and that sort of thing kind of projected her as a person um I don't know if any of that made sense but <laughs> sure <laughs> um we have her classic very elegant formal wear very typical kind of mum active yoga like gym wear she has the beautiful elegant robe of her bed. Her party wear is very like mum vibes. Again, when I say mum vibes, I don't even need, mean anything bad or negative by it. I just mean it kind of like that clothing I see like a mum wearing. Like she goes out to a party or she's backyard barbecue with her friends, that sort of thing. And I don't know, this, this outfit just fits that. So I thought that that worked well. Swimwear, very modest, still kind of shows off her curves. Has a little bit of, you know, cleavage showing because she is quite a beautiful woman. And yeah, she's a lot more modest and covered up than of course her teen daughters would be. We have her summer wear. Again, when I was planning out this outfit, I kind of just saw it as something that she would potter around the house in. Maybe not the wedges necessarily, but I definitely see her like watering the garden and doing the laundry and that sort of thing in this kind of outfit. And then her cold weather or winter wear, again, I just get super comfy mum like taking her kids to after school curriculars or extracurriculars, whatever they're called. I don't even know, but yeah, I think that her outfits are very, very her and very true to who I'm trying to get her to reflect. Um, but she is absolutely beautiful. I just, I don't know. I love everything about her and I've said it before and I'll say it again, but I feel like every time I make a sim for a let's play video or for a game save or anything like that, I feel like the standard just gets higher and higher and higher and this family is no exception i'm utterly and completely obsessed with every single sim in this family so yeah this is the beautiful cara i absolutely adore her we then have the ever gorgeous adam bloomwood so this is of course daddy sim or cara's husband um he is the father to our two teen girls he is absolutely beautiful to look at and he is an absolutely beautiful human or Sim, if you will. Um, with Adam, I definitely get very sort of warm and loving vibes from him. Again, like I mentioned, he was Kara's high school sweetheart. He loved her like infinitely, like the minute they met, it was like love at first sight. They've been together ever since. His eyes have no interest in anybody else. Um, and he's completely and utterly dedicated to her. And of course, when his two girls came along, head over heels he would do anything for them he's the kind of dad that you know he will drop everything he will go and pick them up from those high school parties you know at all hours of the morning he will take them to all of the extracurricular activities he will do absolutely anything and everything to make them happy and of course the same with Kara. in terms of his personality i definitely see him as the dad who likes to tinker around the house and when something's broken he's the dad that's in there fixing things you know if there's a leak in one of the pipes or if the shower or the toilet's broken he's in there repairing it or you know if the the metaphorical car <laughs> not metaphorical but if the car the sims car the family car needs repairing you know he's out there giving it a shot and even if he doesn't get it fixed he tries his darn just to try and do it um but yeah i definitely see he's got a close bond with all three of his girls but his particularly strongest bond is with uh, his daughter Poppy, because they do share music interests, they share a love of animals. Um, so I feel like their bond is a lot stronger than everybody else's. But of course, he doesn't play into that. He doesn't show that. Of course, no, no parent wants to show that he has a favorite child. But in this particular instance, he definitely does. Um, to an extent, he's also very much under the thumb when it comes to Kara. So when they leave the house, she dresses him. He sort of wears whatever she wants. He does whatever she wants. Um, there is nothing too big that she could ask him to do. And he's just, like, again, completely smitten. Um, like I said, 
because he is such a proud parent, I did give him the super parent trait. Um, so for him, he's sort of very domesticated. Like I said, he's a, a household handyman, very hands-on with the girls. You know, it wasn't a matter of even though Kara was a stay-at-home mum or wife, he also shared the responsibilities as well. And whilst he did generally hold down a job or two, um, he always made sure that on the weekends he spent time with the family. He took the family out. Like it was very much quality time on the weekends. Um, so I thought that that was super fitting for him. And then in terms of his likes and dislikes, I've only given likes so far. So in terms of his likes, I did give him likes that of course, in terms of attractive features matched Kara. Um, I didn't give him a favorite color. I feel like he'll pick that himself mainly because his outfits don't really have a particular color theme like most of my other Sims. Um, and then like I mentioned, he does share a bit of a love of music with his daughter and his wife. So he also likes backyard music as does Kara. And what else did I make him like? I can't remember actually. Retro music. He has a thing for retro music. Um, in addition to that, he does also share a love of animals with Poppy. I think I touched on that earlier, but I did also therefore give him the animal enthusiast trait because, I mean, if you're going to love animals, you might as well be a full-blown animal enthusiast. I did also give him the family-oriented trait again because he's such a hands-on dad because he's like... I don't know. Like, I don't even know. I feel like I keep repeating myself, but I just want to emphasize how much he is a family man. Um, for him, like I said, he was the quarterback in high school. He married his high school sweetheart. He's got two beautiful daughters, a beautiful home, and his life is just like to him, that's all that he needs from life. So he's a very simple, very easygoing, easy to get along with kind of guy. He's the chill, he's the calm before the storm. So when Kara is, you know, wound up or, you know, gets easily irritated, he's very much the like, it's going to be fine. Like, chill out. It will be okay. I promise, you know, just take a deep breath kind of person. Um, so yeah, he's very family oriented as well. And I did also make him a romantic. So again, I kind of see him as the guy that comes home with flowers or chocolates or gifts for his girls, just because, you know, he likes to show his affection in other ways other than, you know, the, the standard sort of hugs and kisses and listening and all of that good stuff. He also likes to show that, you know, he loves them through gifts. Um, he's just very thoughtful as a, as a sim, I guess. Um, in terms of his outfit, um, like I said, this is very much Kara has dressed him, but then his alternative option is very casual. This is kind of what he wears around the house and on the weekends, just very sort of chill, comfy. Formal wear is pretty standard. His athletic wear is pretty standard, but also gives off dad vibes to me. This outfit for his pajamas or his sleepwear is very much dad vibes to me. And I just love the little slippers. I just thought that they sort of finished off this outfit really well. His party wear, again, dressed by his beautiful wife. Cute little swimwear thing. And, you know, he's a little bit of a hairy guy, but I think he absolutely rocks it. And then again, this is kind of an alternative take on his everyday wear. The only difference is he's traded out his sneakers for some flip-flops. And then his winter wear, again, very smart, very kind of trendy, very much dressed by Kara. And I guess the other thing to note with Adam is that he is salt and pepper as well. So whilst they are young parents, um, obviously people get older, they start to show some greys. And I thought it would be appropriate to kind of have a little couple little wrinkles there and some salt and pepper hair just to sort of give the definition of age because I feel like with sims you can't really tell their age unless they've got gray hair you can't really tell one age from another um but yeah that is Adam family man heartthrob love him next up we have the beautiful Daisy Bloomwood so if you couldn't already tell from looking at her Daisy is our stereotypical popular she captain spitting image of her mother she is absolutely beautiful she is essentially the walking embodiment of perfect beauty essentially so going through high school she is of course that girl that people drop their jaws at you know they 
disgustingly wolf whistle her but she kind of enjoys it secretly like she calls them out on it but she very much enjoys the limelight she enjoys the attention um i do envision her having a boyfriend i haven't sort of nutted that part out yet but i do definitely see her have a having a boyfriend from again either the football team or the hockey team or something like that who um she's quite in love with and despite that she still loves attention from other men um and women you know she'll take whatever attention she can get um but yeah she's she's very barbie-esque you know there's the blues the pinks the heels and of course like i said she is pretty much the spitting image of her mum. she does have a slightly more squared off jaw but otherwise she gets all of her traits from her mum. she got it from her mama um but she's absolutely stunning with Daisy, like I mentioned, aside from the fact that she is the popular girl and the cheer captain, I feel like other than, you know, wanting to be in the spotlight, she does also care about her family, but she doesn't really show it. She doesn't really say it. Um, and her sister Poppy, because they are so incredibly different, I feel like going through school, she tends to sort of stay away from her sister. She wants nothing to do with her sister. She doesn't even want people to know that she is sisters with Poppy. Um, because she feels like Poppy's alternative way of living and the way that she dresses and that sort of thing is very different to her. And she, I guess she sort of feels like Poppy might bring down her image. And then of course she won't be the popular girl in school anymore. Um, so, you know, when her sister's at school or if her sister's struggling with something or anything like that, she's just, she keeps her at arm's length. But when they're behind closed doors, I feel like they're the best of friends. Like at home, I feel like they have great little chats. They have like sleepovers in each other's rooms and that sort of thing. But when it comes to school, it's like, I don't know you. So she's kind of, there's a bit of a struggle going on for her in her head because she does love her sister. Um, but obviously she wants to make something of herself. And because she wants to be in that limelight and because she does ultimately want to be a successful influencer. She feels like she can't do anything that is going to jeopardize her career ultimately or her future. And if people were to know that her and Poppy were sisters or if that were to get out, then that could potentially jeopardize her dreams. So she doesn't like people knowing those secrets. But yeah, when she's at home, she's a completely different person. She also loves her family, but she obviously has a certain persona that she has to keep up at school. And I do have some plots in line with her, but I'm not going to give them out now because otherwise it's going to ruin everything and you guys aren't going to want to watch the series. Um, but with that said, like I mentioned, because she does like the limelight, because she does want to be an influencer, I thought it only fitting that she was the admired icon trait or she had the admired icon trait. Um, so I guess there's a, you know, that comes hand in hand with relatability. And then I did kind of pair some additional traits so I gave her the outgoing trait and I did give her the high maintenance trait so basically I figured that if you're going to be an influencer you can't be shy you can't be introverted you have to be outgoing because you're essentially putting yourself out there you're putting yourself in the limelight you're putting your face on social media and to do that you have to be outgoing and then in turn you've got to be relatable because people aren't going to be interested in you if you're not relatable and in terms of the high maintenance I feel like Again, behind closed doors, she's a mess. Every morning before school, you know, she's throwing her clothes, her shoes, her underwear, her makeup. Like her bedroom is an absolute mess because every day for her is like an absolute mission. She has to find the perfect outfit. It has to go with the perfect hairdo. It has to go with the perfect makeup. And so her room is just a mess of like clothes and clutter and just imperfection. But then obviously herself, she presents as perfection. Like she is literally perfection personified. So that is her. Um, very proud in the way that she dresses. Very proud with her appearance. But if you were to walk into her bedroom, you'd just be like, what the actual hell? So there is that. Very chaotic in that regard. Um, but like I said, absolutely beautiful. Um, I'll take you quickly through her outfits. So she does have three everyday outfits. So again, she's got this very sort of a Barbie-esque outfit. She has a sort of more pretty kind of casual outfit. And then she does have her cheer captain outfit because I figured she can't be a cheer captain and not have at least one of her outfits be the cheer girl outfit. And I even gave her a cute little brown bow to match her outfit. Her formal wear, very glamorous, very formal, very grown up. So again, even though I'm envisioning her as only being about 16 years old, 
I feel like she, because she is in that limelight, again, it all comes back to the limelight and the spotlight. I feel like she feels that she has to project herself as more of a woman and less of a girl. So she does wear a lot of makeup. Um, she's very unnatural, I guess, in that regard. Um, but yeah, she's, like I said, you, you wouldn't know that she was a 16 year old girl. Her athletic wear, very cutesy, very cheer captain, very sort of attention drawing. But again, back at home, behind closed doors, she's just a normal 16 year old girl. She's wearing the cutesy comfy pajamas, the florals, the bunny slippers. Like that is actually her. Like what you are looking at right now is the sim that she is, but then the sim that she projects to the world is completely different. Party wear, again, very glamorous, very, I guess, sexy, sort of very non 16 year old. Again, she's all about the jaw dropping. Typical sort of swimwear, I guess, just a standard bikini. Some cutesy hot weather wear and then some cutesy winter wear. But yeah, that is our beautiful, beautiful Daisy. And here we have Poppy. So this is Poppy. She is the older of the two sisters. I'm seeing her as maybe 17, 18 years of age. She's slightly older uh, than Daisy. So she was the firstborn child. And then basically Daisy came along and everyone's attention was on Daisy even though it was completely unintentional a newborn baby comes into the house and the parents dote over the newborn baby as does everyone else in the family and even though they didn't mean to make her feel excluded she definitely got the vibes as a child that she was being excluded from the family and i guess that's kind of molded and shaped her into who she is now um so she is a little bit edgy she's a little bit introverted um she's socially awkward and of course her style as you can see not quite goth not quite emo not really punk she's kind of just like i said she's alternative she's edgy she's you know she's into the black nails the black clothing she has the blue hair um her makeup style is pretty natural like it's not too over the top as opposed to daisy but yeah she's very very different from her sister so for her like i mentioned she is a little bit introverted she tends to spend a lot of time with the family dog like the family dog is her best friend um, in terms of her feelings and emotions and that sort of thing. She doesn't really give too much away to her family. So when Kara, you know, at night when Kara's like, how was your day, darling? She's like, oh yeah, it was good. You know, and that's kind of where it ends. Um, I feel like she's going to have a little bit of a struggle throughout the Let's Play as well, because again, she's kind of in the shadow of her sister. Her sister is that sim that everybody looks at, that everybody talks about. And then there's Poppy and it's like, she, I guess she feels invisible to the world, invisible to her family. So she's going to have a bit of a struggle throughout the Let's Play. Personality wise, she's like, again, very much like her mum. Um, she's very much her father's daughter as well. Like she's happy to do anything for anyone. She loves her family unconditionally, even though she might not necessarily show it because she is so introverted. And I guess she's sort of scared to let people know that she does have those feelings and emotions. She does very much love her family. And she really, really wants to be her sister's best friend, not just behind closed doors, but also at school. You know, she wants to be able to hang out with her sister. She wants to be in that same friendship group, but because her sister kind of shuns her, it makes it really hard and she kind of just, you know, she goes home from school, she does her homework, she has dinner with the family only because she has to, and then she retreats to her bedroom, which is actually in the household basement, which I guess kind of adds to the fact that she feels banished. Um, and yeah, she just strays away from everyone, shies away from anyone. I feel like she doesn't really have, like in terms of her close friends, she doesn't have a big friendship group, but she does have one or two best friends who like know her in and out and they sort of know a little bit more about her, but even they don't know the extent of how deep her feelings run and the struggles that she's battling, but she's absolutely beautiful. For Poppy, um, I didn't want to play too much with new things for her. I just see Poppy as a very sort of, she's her own person. She loves animals. Like I said, her best friend is the family dog. She said, shares the animal enthusiast trait with her dad. And I see that she's the kind of sim that wants to run a veterinary, run a veterinary, can't speak. She wants to run a vet, basically. She wants to be a vet or she wants to be a vet nurse. She just wants to do something where she's working with animals because that is where she's happy. That is where she finds joy. Um, so I did actually make her uh, a friend of the animals. So that is going to be her aspiration. 
In terms of her likes, color-wise, of course she loves black. She does like a blue, if you couldn't already tell by looking at her. Um, and then music, like her dad, she does quite enjoy retro music. And of course she does like metal music, just a little. Um, and then like I mentioned, she is an animal enthusiast and she is of course socially awkward. But yeah, I, I feel like throughout the Let's Play, both teenagers have two completely different struggles and I feel like at some point they have to meet in the middle and there's going to be a catalyst for them meeting in the middle and there's going to be some sort of you know change of heart I don't know I have things in mind but again I don't want to give you guys too much information because I want to have that play out throughout the let's play series um but let me show you her beautiful face so again very much like her mother she has her dad's like hair color and um like brows and stuff like that and she does have that rounded off jaw um, which I guess the rounded off jaw isn't really her mum or her dad. It's kind of somewhere in the middle. But in terms of like her mouth, her eyes, she's her mum. And then she's got her dad's like dark features. Completely different nose. I don't know where the nose came from. The other two have really petite noses. And I think even Adam has quite a petite nose con considering. And then outfit wise, again, she does have three everyday outfits. So she's got this one. She has one that's a little bit more prim and proper. Kind of preppy, I guess, maybe. Um, and then she's got something that's like super casual. Her formal wear, I'm going to show you very briefly because again, this is going to be somewhat featured in the storyline. So I don't want to give too much away, but this is her formal wear. Absolutely stunning. We have her athletic wear. Not that she's very athletic. I don't see her like running, jogging, meditating, going to the gym, nothing like that. But I do see her kind of like walking around the house or like chilling around the garden, that sort of thing in this outfit. Sleepwear, baggy shirt, baggy pants, party wear, again, still kind of very edgy and alternative, but also kind of cutesy. And again, she does look a little bit more grown up when she puts more makeup on her face because for everyday wear, she's very sort of natural, but party wear, she chucks on a bit of lippy, a bit of eyeliner, and she does, of course, then look a little bit more her age. Then we have her swimwear, again, just a standard black bikini. We have some cutesy summer wear, so just a cute little top, some high-waisted pants and some flip-flops. And then her winter wear, again, very much her, very sort of alternative and just super, super cute. So really, really love Poppy. And finally, we have the super cute Max Blueboard. So he is, of course, the family golden, I think he's a retriever. retriever. So when I thought of this family, I wanted to project that they were a sort of working class, middle class family, not necessarily struggling to get by, but by no means rich. You know, they kind of live in a smaller home. They have a small little yard. They don't go out a lot because obviously Kara doesn't work and Adam is the, the only one who brings home an income. They're trying to put the girls through school. They're trying to save for the girls' future. Um, so when I thought of what kind of a pet a middle class or working family would have, I thought, retriever or labrador so labrador retriever we have that and he was actually made by the wonderful pug owned who you can find on the gallery under pug owned she makes a whole heap of wonderful pets she does a wonderful range of builds so if you want to check her out definitely do that but max on the gallery is a female <laughs> so i of course changed that to make him max and then we chucked a cute little leather collar on with an id tag and this is our family dog. So this dog, I imagine that this was one of those gifts that when the girls were quite little, he was a, a gift for Christmas and he has been part of the family ever since and they obviously love him to death. But like I said, particularly Poppy, he is Poppy's best friend. I feel like he lives with Poppy. He sleeps in Poppy's bed and or her bedroom. He follows her around everywhere. The two are the best of friends. Um, but of course, he's very loyal. He's very affectionate and he loves all of the family just that he gravitates more to Poppy because she showers him with love. You know, she's always got treats for him and she's giving him pats and belly rubs and they just love each other so, so much. Um, and I absolutely adore him. So that is Max Bloomwood. But there you have it. That is the Bloomwood family. Like I mentioned, they are going to be the main family that we are playing with throughout the high school years Let's Play series. Of course, there will be other families, there will be other teens, but it's probably gonna be easier to introduce you to them as they appear in game. Like I said, I do have some storylines in mind. So as those different sim storylines eventuate, I will introduce you to those sims accordingly. Um, 
But that's everything for this video. I just wanted to give you a bit of an idea of what was coming, a bit of an idea of who we're going to be seeing in the Let's Play series. And basically my intentions for the high school years Let's Play series is going to be some very casual gameplay. I really want to explore the high school years pack in depth. I want to watch the girls go through high school. I want to watch them, you know, develop their passions, their dreams, and I want them to if we don't extend the series, I want to see them at the end of the series, you know, go off and pursue their dreams. Um, that's kind of where I'm going with it. But I do definitely want to take my time with the series. I don't have any sort of deadlines or I don't have like, you know, I'm going to do 10 episodes. I'm going to do 12 episodes. You know, each episode is going to go for 30 minutes. Nothing like that. It's going to be very casual, very relaxed, very chill. And I just really want to enjoy the story element of this series because I kind of want it to be heartfelt, very sort of emotional, but in a good way. Um, I just, I don't know. I just, I just want it to be really casual and really chill and really fun. And even though there might be some tough, sad moments, there's also going to be some really happy moments. And I want to be able to capture the full range of emotions that go through a family's lives on a day-to-day -day basis, particularly when they've got teenagers, particularly when you are a teenager. I want to try and capture it all. So we'll see how we go. But with that said, thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you are so willing, pop a comment in the comment sections below. But I'm going to leave it here and I will see you all very, very soon for another video. I'm not sure whether it will be the Family Dynamics Challenge or whether it will be the first episode of the High School Years Let's Play, but I will be back with another video very, very soon. So hopefully I will see you there. But I'm going to wrap it up because my endings tend to go for forever. So I'm going to stop talking. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you all very, very soon. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.